Hello everyone, we're going to do another lesson in painting pages. The first one I actually showed you how to load your brush, so if you missed that, please go back and try and find the video. We'll see if we can put a little link or a message as to where you can find it. And in this one, I'm going to take you through some of these flowers. So these are the sunflowers, then I've got poppies. I've also got doing different shapes leaves, where you get more control over your brush doing pansies and different shapes there and then finally creating the petals that you've learned into different individual flowers. Now if we don't get time to get through all of these in this particular video because I don't want them to take you all day then we'll do as much as we can and then watch out for the next ones. So the first thing that I'd like to do is we're going to go and look at our brushes and remember we need flat brushes for this because we're going to double load them. So I've got a number 12 flat here and the most important thing is that when the bristles come together we get a really nice sharp chisel edge. Now this is brand new so I am just going to dip it in some water and the reason I've done that is it's got what we call size in it and that actually just holds the bristles together, keeps them nice and sharp and it um, helps them stay in shape in, in transit but it's, you don't want that on the brush if you, if you can avoid it. The other thing I want to introduce you to is blending gel. It's quite warm in here, we've got a lot of lights on. So I'm going to be using this blending gel. You can see it's a clear liquid, it's well slightly cloudy and it's actually the base that all of our paints are made from. So that helps us and, it, and I've purposely put it there so you can see it doesn't actually drag the paint with it. What happens is it just rolls over it. So I'm going to be using that to keep the paint moving. So it's really clever the way you can see the paint. It's sliding down the plate, but it actually isn't mixing with the blending gel. And then the other thing is I'm working on a, a china plate. And the reason that I'm doing that or a ceramic plate is so that this can just be washed. All of our cadence hybrids, which are the ones that I'm working with, they're multi-surface, multi-purpose, but also they're... Um, they're, friend, they're family friendly, so they're happy to go down the, well, they're not happy to go down the drain, but we can wash them down the drain. That was a silly expression. Right, so first of all, I'm going to look at, let's look at um, recreating some of these wiggles. So I'm going to dip my brush, first of all, into the crimson and then into this lovely Bordeaux colour. So I've got both sides of my brush with the paint on it. And I'm now just going to push that paint into the bristles of the brush by moving the brush up and down. You can see I've really pushed the paint up there. So I'm going to come back in, let's get a little bit more, do the same thing again so that I can feel that the paint is really sliding there and then making sure I have got that on the right side and I think I've just blended the colour and dipped it in wrong. So I'm just going to go back and clean it down. So I've just picked up the the redder of the two colours to get back that rainbow. So I want it light on one side and dark on the other, like I've got here. And then this first stroke, I'm going to put the chisel edge of my brush down. I'm going to apply some pressure and I'm just going to wiggle. And I'm just going to wiggle up and down and I'm moving it around. And then for the second one, I'm going to wiggle a little bit round and then I'm just going to slide it up here so that you can see how you get this lovely sort of poppy, almost as if it's opening up the petals. So let's do that again. And I've got that blending gel has gone across my colors. So I'm just gonna to go to the other, uh, other side of these puddles so that I can get the, the um, paint as clean as possible. So I'm gonna go here, there you can see there's less of the blending gel and more paint here, so the colors much more vibrant. So I am literally just sliding it round and then again come round and just flick that in. So we've got that poppy head just opening up as it does with nature. And then if I come into my little small brush and I just pick up a tiny little bit of the yellow and I'm just going to put in some little, little touches so that it looks like I've got some seed heads. And then finally, the other thing that I'm going to do is just get some of our black and let's put a little bit of black in there. And we really need this color to dry on here to be able to see the, how, um, 
crisp it is, but I'm just going to go in and put some little touches of black in the centre of the flower, just so that you can see that coming to life. So we've got our poppy head. It's a really simple flower to do. You're literally just sliding the brush and then those wiggles and bringing it all together. Let's move on to the next flower and I'll show you how we bring a few of the different strokes together. So now I'm going to paint a leaf, but I've taken some of the red off the brush here. Literally, I've just wiped it into a wipe. But what I'm going to do is I'm not washing it. I want to let some of that red actually come through the leaves. It's a really good way of getting autumnal shades in your, in your leaves. So I'm going to go into the green that I've got here and I'm going to go into my cream. And again, I'm just going to blend those two colours. Now it looks like I might have taken quite a lot of the red out. You can see just a tiny bit of it coming through into that lemon there as, as it's sort of got a tint of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the green and I'm going to pick up that cream and I'm just going to side swipe the tiniest little bit of it on my brush and you'll see there is really is just the, a hint of that colour so that when I come on here it actually is just very slightly darker on that edge. So let's do that once more and I'm just going to get, I'm going to do a tiny bit of it on the you really have to be so gentle with this because you don't want too much of it, but there's a tiniest bit, if I put it down here, you might just see it. A tiniest bit there and a tiny bit there. And now with the green on the outside, remember the last wiggle was sort of very um, free, wasn't it? It was up and down and up and down. And then we're gonna slide it into the end of that leaf. And then I'm gonna turn this over and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of the green we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go up and down. And you know in all the autumnal colours how you get these lovely sort of shades of the pinks and the um, all the different shades coming through, the burgundies and the oranges. I've just taken that through the middle there and made it all just blend together so it starts to come to life. So now think about how we might be able to engage these with our poppies. So I'm going to come back to my poppy page and just show you, we're still drying over here, but let's just have a look at something we could do. So I'm just gonna blend that color. So a little twist at the top to, to create the, where the poppy stem is gonna come from and then bring that poppy down. And then as I come up here, I'm just gonna get a little tiny bit of that red back on there. I'm just going to go here. So up and down and up and down and let that run through. And then the other side, up and back in and back and back and in and let that slide through and this time that stem is going to come like that and it really is just bringing all those shapes and colors together and again looking really quite fabulous okay so let's take these shapes and take them into some other flowers so we've got a few other ones to um to look at so we've looked at, um, I'm going to take, in fact, I'm going to go over to the sunflower. So we're going to go to, we'll go on to this sunflower. So I'm going to just squeeze out the paint again to get this brush so that it's a little bit cleaner. Now, when you get your teaching guides, what I'd like you to do is load your brush as you've learned to, and then do some practicing actually working on the guide itself. And I've got a little bit of paint here so you can see how it's actually discoloring the guide. And all you need to do is keep a wipe handy so that you can go back over it and wipe that off. These have been specially laminated so that they're not going to, you're not gonna end up with them, um, with the paint everywhere. Okay, so we're gonna create this little um, circle that we've got first. So I'm gonna need some brown and my black. Just checking, just looking at my plate where that um, blending gel is because it's quite difficult to see it in this light. It is almost translucent and so it just finds its own place. So let's get some of that black and plenty of black. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start with the brown on the outside and I'm just going to paint myself a circle. So brown on the outside, black in the middle. So we're painting a circle like that. And then I'm just going to pop that in there. I'm going to go onto a slightly smaller brush 
And this time I'm going to blend my two shades of yellow. So I've got a really bright, vibrant yellow here. And then I've got a lovely soft cream. And I'm going to come to the edge of the flower and I'm just going to pull out here. Now, if you work quite quickly, what you will find is, and it's happened just there, you will get some of the brown coming out into the petals. And it just adds a little bit more blendability, a little bit more um, colour, and it makes it look a little bit more natural. So again, I've got more paint now, so I can come back, put a few more. There was a lovely one there. It pulled, really pulled out well. And you can see how those flowers and those petals all just come together, looking really fab. Then the next thing that we need to do is we need to touch in all of the, all the edge here. So I'm going to just go into the brown and just taking the little brush I've got, I'm just literally touching it in as I go round like this, building up the centre of the circle and just adding in that extra little bit of texture. And then I can come in here a little bit more keep going until I've just got the center as a crescent, just with a little accent there, a little bit more. And that's our sunflower. So quick and easy to do, it looks so fabulous. Let's do the stems for this one. Now, when we do the stems, I'd like to teach you a little bit about the leading color and what that means. So if I put the dark green on one side of my brush, so by one side I mean the, the corner, and I put the light colour on the other. So I've got light on one and dark on the other. I'm just going to blend those together, so make sure that our chisel edge of the brush where the bristles come together is all together. And now I'm just going to let you see what happens. So I'm doing what we call leading with the lightest colour. So here I am, I'm going to lead with the lightest colour, which means the dark colours follow in behind. So it actually is covering over the light. So we end, with, end up with quite strong colour compared to the other way round. So here, I'm working with the other way round. So now I'm going to lead with the dark colour. And what happens here is the light one is the predominant colour. So depending on whether you want light or dark, that determines whether you lead with light or dark. So you make that choice. So I'm actually going to lead with the light colour and I'm just going to pull myself a stem. And as I came down the page, I started to take some of the pressure off. Now, it's a while since I've looked at um, sunflower stems and it's not a bad thing to have a picture of, of an original flower next to you, the natural thing, because it's always good to see how they grow. So I'm going to do a little bit of freehand, just choosing my flat, my petals here. So I'm going to do um, one of those lovely, fabulous little wiggles where we get a little bit of all of the, just the technique and the colour and it just comes together and we can see how that then slides in and it just so remember I'm going to lead with the cream so that means I get the green following through and it will just go through there and I've actually just run out of paint and this goes back to the original conversation we had if it doesn't matter how good your brush strokes are if you run out of paint then it's it doesn't matter because you'll have nothing on your page so let's just go and do this and we'll put a few leaves in. So here's one, here's another. Now I'm going to start to let these fade away because I want to show you a couple of effects. I'm going to fade them away so the brush now is getting the ink, the paint is getting lighter and lighter and it doesn't matter which way I lead, you can see there is nothing, very little left on the stem. Well, I need to join that stem in, so I'm just going to do that just to get so that the leaves aren't floating. But then I'm going to go into this blending gel. So I'm going to dip the whole brush into it and I can see because it's shiny over here, I've got some of it there. And let's just put some down here so you can see it. And what will happen is we'll get these lovely shadows and it just picks up enough of the gel to be able to create a shadow. 
and it lays down and drags out any of the paint that's left in your brush. So you end up with these lovely shadows in the leaves, which looks really, really effective. Now, if we want to put a shading on something, so we really want to bring it to life and we're creating now, this is really getting into the realms of decorative painting rather than just double loading your brush. One of the things that we can do here is we side load our brush with a dark color. So I'm gonna pick a little bit of the brown. So I've got it just on the side and I'm just gonna bring this right in here so you can see. So I'm just literally just grabbing the very edge of the brush and then I'm going to go into the blending gel and I'm putting that across the whole of the base of the brush. And I'm just, you can see there how the gel just blends into the paint that I've got. And if I now come on here and I follow and I trace the edge of that beautiful wiggle that I had, you'll see how it then adds that shade. So what you're getting is you're getting color or darkness, but it just fades away. So we can do that with lots of things and it works really nicely. I'll show you another little trick here. So let's take, um, I'll use my larger brush. I've just got water here in there. Oh, this is a good chance to show you something else that we need to avoid. So if I were to pick up, let me say, I'm gonna pick up my red and my cream and I'm just going to blend them and you keep blending and you blend backwards and forwards and then you paint for a little while and then suddenly what happens is your painting starts to go a little bit muddy and what will be happening is if I just lay this down oh, I'm hoping it's going to do it for me it never goes wrong when you want it to there it is and what I've got is I've got some water and the water is seeping out of the ferrule here and it's coming down the brush. And what's, what will happen is this will all end up merging. And now you can see the paint just starting to bleed up the, up the bristles of the brush instead of being sharp. We need to avoid that because it only takes a few minutes for the colour to get muddy. And then you're going, looking at your work thinking, I really need to start again. So what I wanted to show you was how the blending gel works for the light colors too. So I've got here, this is my blending gel. And look at that. I've got a lovely blend there. And it's translucent and it looks beautifully, beautifully um, blended and there are no harsh lines. So blending gel is a really, really clever product especially when you're working in hot lights, especially when you're working, uh, working really quickly. And the effects that you can get look amazing. So let's try joining some of those strokes. We'll go on to do more of the flowers in some of the other um, lessons. But for now, remember those uneven wiggles and how you can just shape them and bring them into all of the flowers that you're creating. And uh, watch out for our Christmas painting too, because I'm going to show you how to make the most amazing holly.